Okay, let's take a look at a couple of review problems um, involving limits. I ask you to find the limit as x approaches 2, and we're going to do it with the table and the graph. But I'm going to review what I know about limits, and notice here f of x is just x squared plus 3x minus 7. No fraction, so I can solve this one by just getting the solution. The limit will turn out to be the solution. So if I plug 2 in there, I get 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 7, and that comes out to be 3. So I know that the limit error is going to turn out to be 3. I'm going to show that with the graph or table here in a second. G of x, I notice here, oops, when I plug x equals 2 in there, I get 2 cubed minus 7x plus 6, which turns out to be 0, divided by x minus 2, which is also 0, and there is that indeterminate form again. Remember, indeterminate form means there is an answer, I just got to use a different method. And so I go, hmm, how else could I substitute or how else could I solve that problem? I realize, oh, synthetic division might work. So let me do that over here. So remember, I'm looking for the value that makes the dividing by zero problem, which in this case would be two. And then I put the coefficients underneath. But notice here that it is missing the x squared term. So I've got to account for it by putting a zero there. I drop the first number, multiply. One times two is two, add. Multiply again, two times two is four. Add again, multiply, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. I feel really good about myself because i got a zero remainder. So that tells me then that the equation here, if this is x cubed, means my answer has to start at 1 less than that. So my answer will be x squared plus 2x minus 3. And if I replace 2 in there, I get 2 squared plus 2x minus 3 is 1. Oh, oops, sorry. Not 1, but 5. 2 squared plus 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4 minus 3 comes out 5. But remember, I'm supposed to find, also verify that these limits are um, with a table or a graph. So I'm going to use the Inspire to try to come up with a table and a graph. So here's a graph of the first function, x squared plus 3x minus 7. I remember we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 2. So from a graph standpoint, we look at x equals 2 and see, oh yeah, it seems to cross the graph there. So I do my limit from the left side, get closer and closer to that point. From the right side, I trace closer and closer to that point. Notice there's no hole here. Can't associate limits with holes. Here's a situation where the limit exists, yet there's no hole. It's a continuous function. And... The y value of that hole is the number 3 that I found algebraically in the previous problem. Also looking at a table, if you notice, I set up my table so it's very, very close to 2. So I get numbers closer and closer to 2 coming from below it, and numbers closer and closer to 2 from coming above it, and I can see that the y values seem to be getting closer and closer to 3 from both sides. And in fact, the answer is 3, so my limit exists. So I've shown my limit is the number 3, both algebraically, here I've done it graphically, and what we call numerically, via a table. Okay, so here's a graph of the function that was a fraction. So remember, I wanted to find the limit as x approached 2. So again, I go up to 2, where it seems to cross the graph, right here. But notice I'm putting a hole here, an open dot, not a closed dot, because I see that x equals 2 causes a dividing by zero problem. I inspect that equation and I realize the calculator is not going to show the hole, but i got to be smart enough to see the hole there myself just by inspecting the equation and realizing 2 has got to be a problem because of the dividing by zero problem. So now, once I realize that, again, I can trace it from the left side, trace it from the right side, and realize, oh, they are coming together. They are going to the same value, and in fact, they are going to the value of 5, which, by a chance, matches up to what I got when I did the synthetic division. But again, we got to do it numerically, which means with a table. So again, I set up my table, so values very close to 2, both from below and above. Now I can't look at my answer at 2 and get an answer because it's undefined. But now I can look here and say, oh yeah, it seems to be getting closer and closer to 5 from both sides. So my limit, again, is 5. And so I've shown it, again, algebraically, graphically, and numerically. And the numerically, again, remains with a table. Okay, let's review some factoring problems. So this first problem is x squared minus 7x plus 12. 
And I'm going to do a little of my box and diamond just to review how to do that. So remember, the x squared goes in one corner, the plus 12 goes in another, the minus 7x goes on the bottom of the diamond. I multiply the diagonal on the, on, in the square and put that in the top of the diamond. And then I look for two numbers to add, give you negative 7, seven and multiply, give you 12. And I think negative 4x and negative 3x will work really well here. So this problem factors as x minus 3 times x minus 4. Okay, next problem. If you notice it's x squared minus 16, there's no x term, which means that it had to be sort of like 0x. So that means I've got to find two numbers that multiply, give you negative 16. But in this case, add to give 0. And so a little thought on that. I realized, oh, x minus 4 times x plus 4 must be the value that works. Notice negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. And yet when I add those, I get 0. So x squared minus 25 kind of follows the same pattern. So I realize, oh, it has to be x minus 5 times x plus 5. Like I said, I'm starting to see a pattern here. So I think I can attack this x squared minus a squared and realize, aha, uh -huh, it must be x minus a times x plus a. So that gives me a chance of how to graph functions, even in this scenario where I don't really have a number here, but I have a constant. So this gives me a chance to attack a problem like this, where all of a sudden I'm asked to find limit, but notice there's no numbers. So this takes a lot of synthetic division out, out. I can't do those kind of problems. I really got to do the factoring, and that's why the factoring is so important. If I realize, oh, this follows the same pattern, so this has got to be x minus t times x plus t. And again, I have the x minus t on the bottom. I realize, oh, that cancels. So then as I take the limit as x approaches t, I can just substitute in there and realize t plus t is 2t. And so this would be my limit in terms of t. They do this a lot in the AP exam to take away the numbers from you to make sure you really understand the process. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. Now this one actually asks two questions. First of all, I'll ask what the limit as x approaches 5 be. And then I'll ask you to go back and look at the same problem and figure out what the limit as x approaches infinity. And that's a new kind of question, so we've got to take a look at this one. So remember, to do limits, you always do substitution first. So let's substitute 5 into our function and get 3 times 5 squared plus 3 and realize, oh, that's 78. Divided by 5 squared minus 25, 25 minus 25 is 0. Oh, this is a different situation than 0 divided by 0. Remember, 0 divided by 0 means there's still an answer. I just got to find it another way. 78 divided by 0 will always mean there is no answer which we can write as D and E, as does not exist. Okay? But I'm real curious about this. I want to see what this thing looks like by looking at a graph or a table of this, and then maybe that'll give me a hint about how to do the second question as x approaches infinity, because I don't really know how to attack that problem. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, so let's take a look at a graph or a table, or a graph and a table, sorry, of this function. So here's the graph of the function, and I start to inspect it and realize, wow, some unique behavior here right around x equals 5. If you notice, it looks like an asymptote. The function gets closer and closer to it, but doesn't actually touch it. So I'm going to do my little finger thing. I'm going to trace it both from the left side and from the right side. And I notice here that my function on both sides doesn't go to a specific number. On the left side, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which we call negative infinity. On the right side, it gets, just keeps getting bigger and bigger, which is positive infinity. So that means the limit here could be written, instead of as D and E, we could say that the limit is infinite. That's an, uh, just as good an answer as D and E. It just gives me a little bit more information because it tells me, oh, it doesn't exist because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger or grows smaller and smaller. It gives me a little bit more information, so in some ways it's a little bit better answer. If I look at a table, I can kind of see the same thing. It's kind of limited on this table, but as you can see here, as I pick values closer and closer to 5, 4.8, 4.9, I can see that these numbers are getting really, really small. Negative 36, negative 75 seems to be getting really small. Yet from the right side, as I pick values closer and closer to 5, I can see that it's getting very, very big. And so I can say, oh, it's undefined because the limit is growing to infinity. 
and I have a better idea what this graph looks like or why, it, why the answer came out to be the way it did. So remember, we had that second question on this problem. What was the limit as x approached infinity? Well, as x gets bigger and bigger here, I trace this graph, it seems to be leveling off. You notice here, it doesn't seem to be just going down. It actually levels off. And if I look at where it's starting to level off, it looks like there's another asymptote there. And right at x equals 3, it seems like that's where it seems to be leveling off, about in that area. Look at it from the table standpoint. So if you look here at the x values, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yet the y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And in fact, seem to be closing in on the value 3. So the limit here, as for this particular problem, as x goes to infinity, is 3. Now, I'll be honest with you, for the, uh, at this point in your, in your in calculus, it's really the only way to evaluate limits to infinity is either via a graph or numerically via a table. We will learn how to graph these, uh, to evaluate these algebraically, but that'll come later on. Right now, I want you to be able to realize that there are some functions that do require technology and do require you to make a graph or a table to determine what their answer is.